Welcome to the third episode. Let's do some patching. First of all, you need to turn on your modular, then you look for the output modules. They're usually on the side. I have this one on the left and you can see the big check is going directly into my recorder, but you can also put your headphones there. It's important to connect the output of your mixer with the input of the output module. And now I can see this oscillator. I'm going directly from the output of the oscillator in the input of the mixer. And this oscillator for mutable instruments is the same one as the first one, but it's DIY version, which is much cheaper, but it sounds the same. If I take sound from my oscillator and put it into a resonator and then from the output of the resonator I go into the mixer, I can add some nice touch in my sound. I also have this oscillator which output I can listen into the mixer and I can push the button and change the sounds. But the most common path, how you can make your sound quite interesting, is to use a filter. If I take an output of my filter, let's take this low pass, and I put it into the mixer, I cannot hear anything. Because we said filter is an audio modifier. But check this. If I put the resonation on maximum, I can hear the sine sound. So the filter can become the sound source. But let's go back to the patch I wanted to do with you. So you have to pick a sound source, VCO or some sampler, it's up to you. And then you go into the input of your filter. And then from the filter, but the resonation must be down, you're going with the output into the input of the mixer. You can tweak some knobs to change the type of the sound or the parameters of the sound. And also play with the filter and cut off the frequencies. Okay, so I will leave the sound, so I quite like it. Now it's time to add some CV. So let's have a look at this clock out and connect the clock out from our sequencer with the LFO generator. So if I put the tempo down, the LFO will be slower. Well, exactly the same like the BPM in my sequencer. So now I add the LFO into my filter so you can hear the changes. So that's first change. And now let's have a second cable. Yeah, we can make it faster. Now let's have a second LFO and let's put it into the input of our oscillator. So it's changing the harmony in the second oscillator. And let's put some effect on the way. So I disconnect the filter with the mixer and I'm going from my filters output into the input of my effect module and from the effect module output I'm going into the input of my mixer and you can hear the change. By pushing the button you're changing the effects. I 
personally like this one, but it's definitely up to what fits you in your patch and sound. It's really easy to make your patch. Well, I'd say to destroy it just by tweaking a few of the knobs. Let's try LFO somewhere else. And try a different rate of the LFO. it with more calm and now let's try to add some drums so I'm going from my sequencer into my drum module and then from my drum module I'm going the output into the second filters input and then low pass output into the mixer that's quite simple but you get the idea now I want to show you what multiple can does. It's really easy if you wanna make more signals, multiply them. So I'm going from my filters output into the multiple and now all the holes of my multiple has this drum sound. So whatever hole I take I have a copy of the sound I created but I take the one of the sounds the clone of the sounds and I put it into the effect so we can listen that I have one drums without the effect and the second one with the effect It's not necessary for using them both at the same time, but it can be handy if you would like to switch between these two sounds. And of course, multiples are great whenever you would like to make more clones of your signal. And of course, any other sound that I would like to mix. You can add. So now I put sound source into the resonator, which I put into the mixer. And you can hear immediately the change of the mood. Each of the inputs of my mixer has a knob for volume of that signal path. But the, this wasn't ending of volume. This was just making the filter open so you get heard you heard that the sound went through.
this patch looks really easy because it is but it's a basic pathway how to start every time you will go with the sound source into the filter and into the VCA or mixer you will hear sound and then it's up to you how your patch you would like to evolve or lead now in this patch you can of course add more drum sounds and more play with LFOs because we use just two LFOs one for the filter and one for the VCA Let's have a look when you want to connect your modular with external equipment such as output effects, guitar pedals or mixing consoles. First we need to understand how it's audio signal flowing in modular and audio signal you operate with common audio equipment. Here you can see typical sine wave signal from your typical VCO. Such a signal will typically have an amplitude 5 volts and will be bipolar which means it will oscillate between positive and negative range of total peak to peak voltage of 10 volts. The maximum possible output from your Eurorack modular synthesizer can be almost equal to the voltage of the power supply. So that means maximum 24 volts peak to peak voltage. When we compare a typical line level signal coming from your mixing console, you can see it has much lower amplitude it's also bipolar, but the peak amplitude will be 1.7 volts at maximum. Usually it's much smaller, so it will be peaking around 1 volt or less. Output of consumer electronics devices, such as phone, will be really low, having the peak amplitude maxing and less than a volt. When you want to use these external signals, you can use external input and output modules. External input module will amplify the weak signal coming from your keys or laptop to the module levels. Usually it has big jack connector to plug your instrument into and amplify signal output and gain up for amplifying the incoming signal. Sometimes such a module have envelope follower which can analyze the volume of incoming signal and turn it into voltage that you can use that for modulation of some CVable parameters in your system. External output module will attenuate the strong signal from your modular to the generally weaker line level so the inputs of your mixing console or recording device won't get overloaded with too much signal. But such a module is not really necessary, in fact you can use simple attenuator. But using such an output module is every time safe and reliable solution. Output modules usually offer stereo headphone output too, so you can plug your headphones directly to your system. At the end, I would like to tell you some tips. First one is to find your local synth library, if you have one, or some synth shop. It's really important to make connections, not just between your modules. Try it virtually. And if I say virtually, I really like VCV Rec. I use it in the video, in some demonstrations, but it's really great because many modules are for free and as you can see, the interface looks like the inside of the real modular. And most of the modules are for free. Modular Grid is great if you would like to check other patches or if you would like to plan your modular. So when you will plan your case and modules, you can try it there. And I highly advise you to have a bigger case. It's always better than not have a space for your new modules. Modwigler is on the other hand a forum where you can talk about all your troubles or your patches. So it's a really great community if you're starting or if you would like to help with some patches or some issues. And of course YouTube. Also think about the purpose of your instrument. If you would like to focus more on ambient or techno it really depends if you will use another instrument like a combo with modular. So think about this. And grab a soldering iron, which means do DIY because the kits are cheaper and it's lots of fun.